In this video, we introduce the method of integrating factors, which is a technique for solving first-order linear differential equations. It is based on two main ideas, the first of which we're going to call reversing the product rule. This first example will illustrate re reversing the product rule, even though this is not really a complete example of the method of integrating factors. In fact, there will not be an integrating factor in this first example. We're just illustrating reversing the product rule. Let's begin by trying to solve the differential equation t squared dy dt plus 2ty equals e to the 3t, subject to the initial condition y of 1 equals 0. This example is a little bit contrived. We chose it so that we could illustrate the following fact. Notice that the left side of the differential equation is exactly what you would get if you were to use the product rule to expand the derivative of t squared times y. That's because you would use the product rule and take the first function, which is t squared, times the derivative of the second function, giving you dy dt. And then you would add to that the derivative of the first function, which is 2t, multiplied by the second function, y. So the left side of our original differential equation is exactly equal to the derivative of the product t squared y. This step is what we're referring to as reversing the product rule. So that's the left side of the differential equation. The right side is still e to the 3t. Now notice that we could try to isolate t squared y by anti-differentiating both sides of this equation. Anti-differentiating the derivative of t squared y should give us back t squared y as differentiation and anti-differentiation undo each other. On the right side, we'd get the antiderivative of e to the 3t, which we will write as 1 third e to the 3t plus an unknown constant of integration that we will write as c. So we have t squared y equals 1 third e to the 3t plus c. Now we could use the given initial condition to solve for c. If you plug in a 1 for t and a 0 for y, you're going to be able to deduce that c is equal to negative one-third e cubed. And you should probably check this on your own to make sure you get the same thing. Now if we plug that back in to the line above, we get t squared y equals one-third e to the 3t minus one-third e cubed. And then we can isolate y by dividing both sides by t squared. I'm going to simplify as I go and write the, the answer as e to the 3t minus e cubed over 3t squared. This is the solution of our initial value problem. Notice that the main idea here, what allowed us to solve for y, was reversing the product rule so that we could recognize the left side of the differential equation as a derivative. That way we were able to simplify in the following step by taking antiderivatives. Okay, so that's the one of the main ideas, but usually there's another step in these problems and that's where the integrating factor comes in. Now we come to our first legitimate example of the method of integrating factor. This time we're going to find a general solution for the differential equation y prime plus 2y equals x. Notice that we're using x as the variable this time instead of t. What we need to do here is modify the differential equation so that it's ready for us to try to reverse the product rule. It's not ready yet. The left side of the differential equation is not what you would get from expanding the derivative of a product using the product rule but we can modify it so that it is by the expression e to the 2x. Now this is specific to this example. Don't worry about where it came from yet. We'll explain that in a moment. But I'm multiplying both sides of the equation by e to the 2x. 
And notice what's happened now. The left side of the differential equation is exactly what we would get by taking the derivative of e to the 2x times y and expanding that with the product rule. We'd have the first function, e to the 2x, times the derivative of the second function, giving us y prime. And we add to that the derivative of the first function, which the chain rule tells us will be 2e to the 2x, times the second function y. So we were able to reverse the product rule after we multiplied both sides of the equation by e to the 2x. The right side of the equation is now x times e to the 2x. And as in the previous example, we can try to simplify by anti-differentiating both sides. Anti-differentiating on the left side gives us e to the 2x times y. Anti-differentiating on the right side will require us to use integration by parts. Now, I'm just going to write down the answer here that you get from integrating by parts. It's 1 half x e to the 2x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x plus an unknown constant of integration c. And you should probably go back and check that using integration by parts to make sure you get the same thing. But now notice there are no more derivatives or antiderivatives that we need to compute. All that must be done is to isolate y, which we do by dividing both sides of the equation by e to the 2x. Doing so gives us y equals 1 half x minus 1 fourth plus c divided by e to the 2x, which I'm going to write instead as e to the negative 2x. This is our general solution for the differential equation. Notice that the process here was very similar to the first example, except for this initial step where we multiplied both sides by e to the 2x. In this case, the expression e to the 2x is what is called an integrating factor. Multiplying the equation through by e to the 2x was what allowed us to represent the left side of the equation as a derivative of something. So how did we come up with e to the 2x? That's the question. There is a general approach we can take to finding integrating factors for first order linear differential equations. First, we want to write the differential equation in what's called standard form. That's this form here, dy dx plus a coefficient function times y equals another function. And this p of x and this q of x should both depend only on x. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a linear differential equation. We're going to represent the integrating factor with the notation mu of x. This is the Greek letter mu. And what we want to use is, first, we find an antiderivative of the coefficient function p of x, and then we exponentiate that antiderivative. We're going to write it like this, e raised to an antiderivative of p of x dx. And this is any antiderivative. You do not need to use the general antiderivative. You don't need to worry about a plus c. Any antiderivative will work, and usually we'll just use the simplest one. This particular form for mu has the following nice property. If we take the derivative of mu, the chain rule is going to tell us that we should get e raised to this expression times the derivative of this expression. Well, the derivative of the antiderivative of p of x is just p of x. So the chain rule tells us that the derivative of mu is p of x times e to the antiderivative of p of x. Now, the second factor here is mu again. So what we're saying is that mu prime is p of x times mu. Now, why is that useful? Well, let's go back to the original differential equation and multiply the whole thing through by mu of x. Do you see it now? 
this is exactly what we need in order to be able to reverse the product rule. Because here you have mu times the derivative of y, and here you have y times the derivative of mu. So the left side is equivalent to d dx of mu of x, y. After that, you should be able to finish solving a problem like this the way we did before. Anti-differentiate both sides, simplify, and then isolate y. The key step here is being able to choose the appropriate mu of x. In the previous example, mu of x was e raised to the antiderivative 2. That's how we got the e to the 2x that we used before. 